Hello, my name is Ben Axel. I'm CIO and founder of Spruce Point Capital Management. I want to thank you for your time and attention and your interest in our mission. We hope you continue to be safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. Our mission here has always been to provide value-added, differentiated forensic research. We don't believe that every stock is a buy. In fact, we think many are sells. We want to talk to you today about a company that we've done an extensive amount of work on that we think is covering up defective products and putting all of our lives at risk. It's a company called Lidos. The ticker is L-D-O-S. Lidos was formed as a split off from SAIC. A number of years ago, SAIC admitted to committing a $500 million fraud against New York City. They brought in a CEO named Roger Crone. Mr. Crone spent time at Boeing, where he was a direct report and underling of disgraced CEO Dennis Muhlenberg. Under Mr. Muhlenberg's leadership, Boeing fostered what was known as a culture of concealment and putting profits over safety. And we have grave worries that the same thing is happening today at Lidos. Our focus is on the acquisition they made in February of 2020 of L3 Harris's security detection and automation business. This business provides products that are critical for detecting explosives at ports, borders, and baggage security at airports. Through a number of different sources, we've come to conclude that the company has lost market share, underinvested in the product, and has defective products out there in the field. We found a lawsuit of a distributor alleging fraud, alleging defective products. We have import records that are coming through in real time through 2021 of returns of defective products. And we've talked to experts, people, people very familiar with this business, both from a competitive standpoint and from former employees at, at Lidos. Lidos spent a billion dollars for this business, claiming it would do $500 million of revenues, grow double digits, have 15% margins, and grow international revenue from 10% to 13% of the company. We can't reconcile any of this. We've pulled foreign filings. We've talked to experts. The current run rate of revenues that, that the company just reported in Q3 suggests $300 million of revenues. So we're struggling to find where the other $200 million are. In fact, we also can't understand how an implied almost $350 million of revenues were to come from international sources when people tell us that a majority of the business came from the TSA Custom and Border Patrol and domestic sources. We think the, the CEO really needs to explain why he thinks this deal is going ahead of plan, why he thinks that it's business as usual and that the company can continue to hit its targets here. We find another a number of other problems with this acquisition and the company in general. The cash flow we think has been inflated by nearly 60% year to date. We find four factors that the company's pulled that have overstated cash flow. Most importantly, we look at, at the details of the financial accounts. We're seeing aspects that are irreconcilable and unexplainable. In particular, we see deferred revenue increasing and we see unbilled receivables increasing. These are generally telltale signs of either booking revenue prematurely or getting customer prepayments. And the company's mixing and matching its disclosures and explanations as to what's happening here. We've also conducted a forensic look at two of the foreign entities associated with the SDNA business. And what we found was very troubling. First, in late January of 2021, just weeks ago, the UAE business of the automation entity filed financial statements in the UK. What we found was a massive restatement of revenues and net income on the order of 60 and 90%. Color us skeptical, but this seems like it could be more than just an error and financial foul play could be at work here. Secondly, we've taken a deep look at the Thailand distributor of the business. This is an entity known as MIT Solutions. An individual in the web of businesses related to MIT has been linked to a graph scandal of financially influencing the Minister of Transportation in Thailand. The recent financial statements of this Thailand distributor that we pulled show evidence of channel stuffing with revenues going up yet margins falling in half and receivables and inventories vastly outpacing revenues. In addition, we have records of product being shipped back in 2020 and 21 from Thailand to the United States. This again could suggest stuffing of inventory that's now being returned. We have grave concerns with both of these findings and we're continuing to conduct due diligence on other entities around the world and we'll report to you as we find more information. 
Investors are enamored with the potential of double-digit organic growth for Lidos this year, but we take such figures with a grain of salt. We've done an exhaustive forensic study and analysis of the company's historical organic growth claims, and we find evidence that it's overstated these numbers in the past. We look at the IMX medical acquisition. We find that the company initially ignored that acquisition in the calculation of its organic growth. Now we're finding that they're reversing numbers. And even worse, now there's a discrepancy between the numbers they're reporting in the 10Q and the numbers in their financial presentation. So we don't believe investors should be focused on organic growth here. We think they should be focused on cash flow. And in our view, the cash flow is set to decline because the management has pulled a number of levers last year to inflate the cash flow. As you know, at Spruce Point, we're very accounting focused and in particular take very close looks at who's running the books and the numbers. At Lidos, we have grave concerns about the current CAO and the prior CAO. The prior CAO, Mr. Ranji Chadha, came to Lidos from CSC, Computer Sciences Corp., during a very tumultuous period where the company was charged with accounting fraud. In, in part of that fraud, the SEC noted unexplained increases in unbilled receivables. Well, that's exactly what we're seeing at Lido. So that has us on high red alert. Mr. Chatter was removed from CAO and became an overse overseer of the financial planning and analysis. He left in March of 2020 and has now joined another company. When you look at his biography, he's completely removed reference to the fact that he was Lidos' CAO. That's, that's somewhat concerning. The new CAO, Mr. Christopher Cage, has a has a uh, criminal record in San Diego County. When we pulled the records, we found that he was charged with driving under the influence of alcohol, which resulted in endangerment and actually injury to a female passenger. This is pretty concerning to us, given he's the, the CAO of a public company and has a pattern of aggressive behaviors. We have three more additional driving citations in, in the Virginia County where he currently lives and works. Investors should be concerned not just by the business that was acquired a billion dollars, which we believe is practically impaired, but also we believe there are coming challenges that the company is just not recognizing. We interviewed a former C-suite executive of Lidos and asked this executive, what's the biggest risk facing this company? The answer surprised us, surprised us insofar that this was not mentioned as a 10K risk factor. The answer we, we got was, you should be worried about Amazon and Microsoft. Why? Because of cloud modernization programs and growth efforts made by these companies to get federal business. Amazon is now one of the biggest employers in the DC region. They have a tremendous amount of experience and pretty much pioneered the cloud um, business through AWS. And the big worry here is that they're going to go direct to the government agencies and not need to be subcontractors, thus removing Lidos from the equation altogether. More importantly, Lidos competes for technology talent um, and recruitment. Um, this is the same, same factor that led Booz Allen recently to uh, claim that this is a big risk and also to warn that they're having recruitment challenges. It's time for Lidos to fess up that they are facing extreme risks here and let investors know that they're gonna have a very difficult time hitting their lofty goals. When we evaluate this business, we can't look at the revenue. We can't look at the EBITDA. We don't trust these numbers. We have evidence that management's manipulated them. You have to look at the cash flow. And this company at best should trade at 13 times cash flow. When you put that multiple on, you factor in the debt and adjust the cash for some uh, off items that they've had recently. You know, we get to over 60% downside at an extreme for Lidos. And on a final note, I'd just like to make a brief comment about short selling. In my 20 years on Wall Street, I've seen up markets, extreme up markets, bubble markets, sideways markets, choppy markets, down markets, and bear markets. In almost any type of market environment, short sellers are to blame. We're the villains, we're the profiteers, we're the evil part of the, the shadowy market that tries to drive down stocks. Well, that's not always true. At Spruce Point, our mission has always been one thing, to provide differentiated, unique research which challenges the status quo and that tries to hold bad corporate managers accountable for bad deeds. If we can make a profit doing it, that's great. But money hasn't always been our, our primary objective. And to prove that, we wanna donate a portion of the proceeds or profits made from this research on Lidos to various charities that we think will improve society. Because giving back should be in everyone's nature, not just short sellers, but bull market participants, common people, everybody should benefit. 
So thank you very much for your continued interest, Bruce Point. Stay healthy and stay COVID-free, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.